And here to give us a deeper analysis is Edward Chen, Vice President of the Singapore Computer Society. He's also Chairman of SCS Skills Pathway. And we also have Associate Professor Go Wei Han from the Infocom Technology Cluster at the Singapore Institute of Technology. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Um, so, Professor Go, let's begin with you. Tell us what it means to be an AI bilingual workforce and what would be the impact of having one? Right, thank you for having me here. Um, an AI bilingual workforce simply means that uh, a person or a worker is able to speak two languages, the language of their job, their day job, and of course, how to then seek help using AI. Now, when this becomes, uh, you know, the workforce, you'll see much changes in sense of increased productivity. Tasks will change, uh, probably more than uh, the occupations themselves, because what will happen is that you will see AI grabbing or doing things that are repetitive. So things like drafting, summarizing, first pass checks, uh, you know, all those kind of things, those can be so-called uh, delegated to the AI. Then the human themselves, i.e. the worker, they will do things like judging, all right, exercise empathy, accountability, and all that. Right. So jobs will evolve, yes, but uh, having said that, a financial analyst, for example, will still analyze data, but maybe he'll use AI to reconcile data across systems, for example. Mm -hmm. Teachers will still teach, right? but maybe they'll use AI to develop material, to track progress, and, and so on. So yeah, by and large, the idea is that if done properly, this will increase productivity. And Mr. Chen, let's bring you into the conversation here. So one way to help workers become AI bilinguals is, of course, through the new skills pathway for cloud that we mentioned earlier. So what can participants expect to learn from this pathway and how does strengthening our cloud capabilities help to push and support this national ambition? So first, uh, cloud is the foundation of AI. Mm -hmm. It provides the massive supercomputing required um, it also provides a storage and fast networking to power your AI models. So if cloud is the engine of AI, mm -hmm. then cloud talents will naturally be the fuel that powers our AI ambition for the country. So the question yeah, yeah. go ahead. So the question is really how do we create this fuel for mm. ourselves in Singapore, for Singapore? And I think in, it's in, the, in this light, uh, Singapore Computer Society partnered with uh, 14 major employers in cloud. Uh, to co-create this uh, skills pathway. Mm. It's essentially a cheat sheet that, okay. that, sort, and that allows uh, someone interested to come into the industry to understand what jobs are available, mm. uh, understand what skills are required, and more importantly, what certifications are highly valued by employers for employment. Okay, Professor Go, but before we get to these uh, processes that Mr. Chen mentioned, where do we currently stand in terms of AI adoption across the sectors? Would you say that it is still at a surface level? Oops, mm -hmm. okay. I would say that we've moved beyond novelty. So when you know, AI was first uh, mainstream. Mm -hmm. uh, people think, well, uh, AI can actually do this. We've probably moved beyond that. Uh, most organizations have probably tried AI, you know, to do things maybe like brainstorming to, uh, for programmers, maybe to co uh, suggest code and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're still seeing the potential for things to go deeper, right? Currently, we are seeing probably, well, maybe in an organization, we have maybe a person to a department that uses AI well. Right. They might have, uh, for example, uh, in, in a university, you may have professors, for example, using it to help to create teaching material and all that. So it's still you know, in, in spots. Right. So there's potential for organization wide processes to be evolved right, mm -hmm. in order to incorporate AI. Right. And then from there, you know, go deeper into incorporating AI into the day to day work and to truly be you know, AI bilingual workforce. Oh, what, what do you think are the key barriers that are holding back? deeper AI adoption and what will it take to move people to deep use? At this moment, I would say people are still trying to understand what AI can and cannot do mm -hmm. because ultimately, if uh, we talk about the AI-enabled workforce, right, at the end of the day, we are using AI to automate the repetitive, the I would say the simple task, right? So humans will still need to be the ones judging. We will be the ones accountable. We'll be the ones actually uh, deciding what to approve what not to approve. So we first need to know what AI can do. And this translates into, well, how we actually train our workforce, our graduates for the industry as well, because mm. it's no longer about, well, can you code? But 
can you look at its code and tell me, well, is it correct? Is it wrong? Is it good? Is it not so good? And you know what needs to be changed and so on. Uh, Mr. Chen, you know, so beyond the skills pathway, how else is your organization uh, supporting this national push to equip workers with not just the AI literacy, but also the fluency and the, the confidence in, in using these mm. tools? Yeah. You know, um, in learning a language to be truly fluent, yeah. you don't just have to know a few words, but you actually know, you need to know when uh, to use certain phrases, mm. at the same time, when not to use certain phrases. The same applies in AI. So in AI, I think as a utilization of uh, AI model scales up across multiple industries, I think the, the risk management becomes a real issue from cyber security safeguards to even a responsible ethical use of AI. So that's why uh, SCS has been on the forefront on pushing, mm -hmm. um, um, leading in terms of uh, this developing this domain called AI ethics and governance. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really to, to develop the know-how, to know how to use AI responsibly and when not to use it. Uh, and I think uh, my organization, organization, the SCS, has uh, uh, developed a special interest group to mm -hmm. bring like-minded folks together. We have uh, launched a course with NTU mm -hmm. uh, on AI ethics and governance and even have a professional industry recognized certification. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, we also release a book of knowledge you know, to share this wider knowledge with the general public as well as digital practitioners. So there's an emphasis on ethics and governance, but how are you measuring progress or impact when it comes to building this, this fluency? Um, I think really is, is, in terms of fluency, how we measure is really in terms of the actual applications, whether you make impact in the verticals, um, for example, in cybersecurity, mm. whether that has transformed not just the tools, but also the processes and how we organize ourselves to do certain operations. Okay, and Professor Goh, um, what are your thoughts on the future of em employment changing uh, given these AI demands? Um, the way I see it, I mean, in general, AI probably won't replace people if we do it right, right? Because ultimately, then we'll start training people to use AI to incorporate it into workflows, uh, you know, to ensure that there are guardrails to be able to identify when the AI is right, when the AI is wrong, and so on. So uh, if you're asking a one-liner, AI won't replace people, at least that's what I hope, right? And the skills to actually, uh, you know, be an AI-enabled worker is not that difficult to, to attain, actually. I mean, uh, skills like, for example, asking the right questions, being able to discern from right and wrong, being able to, uh, you know, formulate... Um, well, your workflow properly, right, so that you can prompt the AI uh, models and so on. So all these are within reach, actually, of, uh, you know, of the common worker. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Appreciate your insights. Thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. That was Associate Professor Go Wei Han from the Singapore Institute of Technology and Edward Chen from the Singapore Computer Society.